Hello students, this is a brief lecture on Jesus lost in the temple, which is from the very end of the second chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. And this story takes place mostly in the great temple in Jerusalem, the heart of Jewish worship and sacrifice. So let's read quickly this, uh, this account from Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor, before God and man. So that's the passage. Now let's look at some of the interesting details that Luke has buried in his, in his text. So first of all, verse 41, the purpose of the visit. This is Passover, so one of the great Jewish feasts where they commemorated the angel of death passing over the Jewish people, protected as they were by the blood of lambs spread over the doorposts of their houses. Luke tells us that the Holy Family ventured to Jerusalem every year for this particular uh, feast. So this uh, has a couple things signifying it. So first of all, it tells us that Jesus came from a very devout Jewish family; that they were they were practicing Jews. They were rooted in the law and in the uh, and in the customary observances of the Jewish people. But also with Passover, it's interesting because the the Passover lamb that is slain in the Old Testament in Egypt signifies something else that's going to happen: the the true Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, which is Jesus himself. And now Jesus is here for the first time in the temple. In verse 42, we found out that Jesus is 12 years old. Now this is significant because 12 years was not generally considered to be the age of manhood. Now, after Jesus' time in Jewish practice, they, they kind of settled on 13 as the year of someone attaining their majority. You were considered a man or a woman. When you were 13, you'd have your bar mitzvah or your bat mitzvah. Here, Jesus is only 12, and Luke, and Luke is kind of saying, okay, even as a child, there was something special about Jesus, even before he became a man. There's something particular about this child and his intimate knowledge of God and the law. And then right after that, we see this picture of Mary and Joseph losing track of Jesus and, you know, getting panicked. And this is, this is an important scene. I think it shows us two things. First of all, it shows us that being sinless, because Mary, the mother of God, was without sin, being sinless is not the same thing as having all knowledge or power, or being perfect in every way in that sense. You know, this was a, an honest mistake that Jesus had always been this obedient child. She thought that he was with the caravan. She thought he might have been with Joseph, with the neighbors, whoever. And it wasn't any lack of love on, on her part uh, that caused her to leave Jerusalem with the caravan, even though she didn't see Jesus uh, necessarily at that time. So making a mistake is not the same thing as committing a sin. The second uh, important point here is that love is always searching for the beloved. And Mary and Joseph, when they find out that Jesus is missing, they show their love by searching for three days and not giving up. Three days, I mean, that's that's a lot of time. You know, Jerusalem, it's not like you're you're searching for Jesus, you know, in Beijing here. Three days, you could, you could cover a lot of territory in, in ancient Jerusalem in that time. And you could just picture Mary and Joseph frantically searching around for him. As the story continues, when Mary and Joseph find Jesus, he's in the temple and he's asking these learned and intelligent questions of the scholars of the law, which again goes back to this profound understanding that he had of, of God and of God's revelation, even as a child. So it's, again, pointing to his remarkable, uh, remarkable destiny. And when Jesus finally meets his parents, it says that they, they just don't understand him, which is the, you know, the experience of a lot of parents in dealing with a teenager. But that it's Mary and Joseph, you know, good, good parents, not understanding their son, who is a good kid, shows that, you know, that 
the distinction between faith and understanding. It's not that they lose their belief in him, but they, they're presented with something. They're presented with an experience that they don't understand. That doesn't make them stop believing in Jesus, but it's just something that they, they don't know, they don't get yet. Now, after that, it, it's important that even though they don't understand, what does Jesus do in response to their misunderstanding? He doesn't correct them or do anything. No, he gets up and he's obedient to them. And it says Mary kept all these things in her heart, this whole incident she kept in her heart. And the exact translation is not these things, it's these words. It's these words, like the whole experience, like these, the, the words that her son gave her, the words of the experience itself. Um, these are what she kept in, in her heart. She kept all these words in her heart, like all these images, all these experiences, all the words of her son. So again, two, two things of significance here. The first is that it shows the humility of Jesus, that even, even the Son of God is willing to submit himself to parents, and parents who don't understand him. But you know what? He still is willing to obey them. It's a remarkable example of, of humility from the Son of God. And on top of that, this shows that, that Mary's a woman of prayer. What does it mean to be a woman of prayer? That she takes these things and she holds them in her heart. She prays about them. She doesn't discard them. She doesn't excuse him, you know. No, she, she treasures these things that she doesn't understand right away, waiting for the time when she will understand. And finally, Luke gives us this line that covers the next 18 years of Jesus' life, that Jesus grows in, in grace and wisdom and age before God and man. What's the point of this? You know, it, it raises an interesting puzzle because if Jesus is God, how can he grow in any way? How can he grow in grace and wisdom and any of this sort of thing? Well, St. Thomas says that there are a couple of ways that you, someone can grow. I mean, they, they could grow absolutely, and in a sense, Jesus cannot grow in wisdom, because he, he is perfect wisdom, as God. But it says you can, you, can, you can grow in the knowledge of something by learning the same thing in a new way. And so Jesus, as a human being, is able to grow in grace and in knowledge because he's now learning in a human sense. Before he knows as God, but now he knows as a human. And that is something that really develops. Like he really does experience brain development as he's, as he's growing older. You know, his body is maturing. There, so there are things that you learn in that way by being human and by practicing things, you know, and by making good decisions over and over again. So it shows that Jesus is really, uh, is really human and develops in certain important human ways.